Hi everyone, welcome to the RPB Resonance Chemistry. Now let us continue our lectures on electric chemistry. Today we are going to discuss about uh, Faraday's laws. That is nothing but it is in a part of a quantitative analysis on electrolysis reaction. Okay, now let us go through the uh, Faraday's laws, uh, very clear cut explanation by the series of experiments as well as uh, their theoretical parts and the derivation of the first Faraday's first law of uh, equations. If it is possible, I will solve the, one of uh, some of these previous year questions which are asked in like JE mains, CSR net, GATE, those neat exams. Okay, now let us go through the our topic, uh, the quantitative analysis on electrolysis reactions. Especially that is the first call, Faraday's first law. Faraday's first law. So Michael Faraday, in 1880, in 1833, they are uh, they are introduced to two theories. One is uh, Faraday's law for Michael first and the second laws, which are on electrolysis. So the first theory is Faraday first law on electrolysis. Okay, according to this theory, so the quantity of uh, like a uh, the amount of substance whether deposited or liberated at particular electrodes the amount of substance deposited or liberated at particular electrodes which is directly proportional to the the quantity of current passed through it the quantity of current passed through it so now this statement which is explained by the some of the theory some of the experiments series of experiments now here so before going to the Faraday's law, so first of all we are aware about uh, the electrochemical cell. The electrochemical cell. Okay. Now here it is uh, like an anode. Here it is the cathode. Anode and the cathode. So in this uh, electro, it is a vessel. It having a certain solution. That solution is called the electrolyte. That solution is called electrolyte. So two electrodes dip in the electrolyte. Electrolyte that is a particularly solution. Again, which are connected to the series of like a, which is connected to the like a battery or an ampeter. So this is the simplest voltmeter. Okay. So now in this session, so here the anode will disappear. So that means anode it it occurs oxidation reactions. Oxidation means loss of electrons. If electron is lost, those corresponding ion will also will be lost. Those ion corresponding ion which is deposited at the cathode that means uh, here we observe the uh, like a uh, disappearance disappearance now here the disappearance of electrons and cations those cations will attack over the like a uh, cathode so those cations will attack over the cathode that's why it is called as cathode that's why it is called as a cathode it obstructs the cations that's why it is called as cathode even though it is uh, like a negative charge now here the cations which is a uh, uh, liberated from the anode which is deposited at the cathode so that means uh, you get the electrical rod that the like uh, electrode size will be more electrode size will be more so now at the time electrode size will increases on the cathode that indicates uh, the deposition that indicates the deposition of the uh, like a uh, uh, cations over the cathode so it is occurs in in case of simple electrochemical cell okay now here the disappearance that is nothing but liberation of ions now here deposition of the uh, metal which is on the surface of the cathode okay these two are up uh, these two are occurs in a simple electrochemical reaction whenever it is uh, connected to three a battery or one meter okay now in this case whenever we will apply the some current we will pass it through the some current on like a particular electrolyte so we will uh, supply the current on particular electrolyte so here some of the substance which is liberated at the anode and deposited at the cathode okay now let us assume so the liberation or deposition of the amount of substance the amount of substance whether it is liberated or deposited the amount of substance liberated or deposited at particular electrodes at particular electrodes is directly proportional to the is directly proportional to the quantity of current quantity of current passed through it passed through particular electrolyte passed through a solution or electrolyte simply passed through it okay so particular electrolyte passed through an electrolyte that is nothing but a solution 
okay so th that means uh, how much of how much quantity of current we will pass through the a substance uh, or electrolyte uh, that is uh, that is directly proportional to the the amount of liberation or the amount of deposition at cathode so liberation at anode the deposition at cathode so in case of deposition that means uh, here it is the like a cathode deposition means it is a reduction gain of electrons that indicates a reduction so here we will observe uh, these type of electrons now gaining of electrons of the our cathode our cation so will appears as a metal simplest metal this is a uh, this is absorbed at the like a cathode reaction it is this is absorbed at cathode simply it is in a reduction reaction so under cathode so it 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 occurs a reduction reaction it occurs a reduction reaction this is the first experiment now i will explain the second experiment uh, so based on the like a uh, very basic strength uh, which is required for the basic strength to understanding the like a uh, faraday's first law now let us discuss the second experiment okay now here it is deposited okay now so let us let us uh, like let us take the three types of uh, three electrochemical cells okay now here it is anode it is cathode electrolytic solution uh, similar electrolyte similar electrochemical cells so here it is cathode and anode anode sorry anode cathode anode cathode so now here it is anode that is positive cathode is negative now here anode cathode okay now here these cat these cation so the cathode will up, uh, will connected to the a battery so here it is a battery so which is connected to through a battery so the negative part cathode will attack over the like a, it is an electrolyte voltmeter a this is an voltmeter b this is an voltmeter c okay now here these ne uh, negative part that is cathode will attack will attach it to the like a b electrolyte anode and c electrolyte anode c electrolyte anode so again these two cathodes these two cathodes are will connected in a meter will connected and a meter so this is an ammeter so again these porous plug out out plug the plug which these two are the connected to a series of a system so this is the system plug okay so this is the simplest thing okay now here it is cathode 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 so a cathode b cathode c cathode so let us imagine so the weight of the cathodes now uh, by using the like an uh, weighing machine so now here a left pan it is the left pan as a like an electrode so right right pan is a, here it is the pan so this is the an electrode so in this case here we will use the like weighing weights it is the weights so now so by using the, these technique we will calculate the like a left side electrode weight so that is a cathode so particularly a cathode weight is uh, let us assume here it is the 50 grams so let us assume so here it is approximate values now the b is uh, like a 50 grams c is like a 50 grams okay now so after some times we will pause it we will switch on the like electrolysis process here voltmeter a b c uh, these three are the connected these three are the like uh, electrolysis will be running so on the electrolysis uh, here a b c all the components all the voltmeters uh, they are deposited some amount of some amount of uh, particular metal at the cathode plug at the cathode electrode particularly at the cathode so that means uh, here it is uh, the size of cathode will be more so the size of cathode will be more that is coated so the size of cathode will be coated okay now here in case of flowing of current in case of flowing of current so after certain time so we will observe the those weights again we will reweight the those cathodes and so now here it is approximately 60 grams so b is 55 grams c is 55 grams so this is this is the values so after electrolysis so this is before electrolysis this is before electrolysis now here let us let us observe the, those connections of the a b c um, a b c voltmeters now here a is directly connected to the our batteries but uh, the sum of the flow of the current of b and c the flow of current of uh, sum of the b and c voltmeters uh, which is equal to the a okay okay now i'll show the uh, these uh, this is a setup of the uh, diagram in, in left, left side so you will observe so the sum of the flowing of electro, electro electricity of uh, b and c is equal to the a 
the e is equal to the air. So now here, the amount, uh, the how much amount of quantity of uh, uh, like uh, metal which is deposited at cathode A is 10 grams. So that means 60 minus 50, 10 grams. Now here, five, uh, 55 minus 50, 5 grams. So here it is 5 grams. Okay. That means uh, these three, the flowing of current of B plus C is equal to the A. So again here, the amount of substance uh, B and C here, B, E, C, which is equal to the A. Okay. So the amount of quantity of electricity passed through it uh, is directly proportional to the, the amount of substance, uh, the amount of substance, whether it is liberated or deposited. So this theory fulfilled the Faraday's uh, experiment, Faraday's law of first theory. Okay, so this is the experimental condition. Now I think it is clear. So there is any, there is no doubt. So the quantity of electricity passed through an electrolyte, which is directly proportional to the amount of substance, whether it is liberated or deposited. I think it is clear. So everyone should uh, aware about Faraday's first law. Okay, now let us go through the theoretical part of the Faraday's first law. Okay guys, now let us go through the like a derivation part, uh, like a derivation uh, equations formulas of the Faraday's first law. So now according to the previous definition, the amount of substance whether it is liberated or deposited which is shown by the symbol W. So that is the uh, amount of substance whether it is liberated or deposited. So which is directly proportional to the, the quantity of electricity passed through it. The quantity of electricity passed through it. So now here the amount of substance amount of substance whether it is liberated or deposited liberated or deposited okay so now here q is equal to quantity of electricity quantity of electricity passed through it quantity of electricity first simply the quantity of electricity that is nothing but uh, i into t so amperes in current uh, particular time. So now here it is the electrochemical cell. So here we will observe the like a quantity of uh, electricity that is current uh, which is uh, which is measured in the amperes. So particular time. So we will observe, the, we will pass it through the 5 amperes current in one second. That means uh, there are particular, the product of 5 amperes in 2 seconds, uh, that is nothing but quantity of electricity. So simply, so Q is equal to I into T. So I is amperes uh, into time is seconds. So amperes into time amperes into seconds which is nothing but a q that is nothing but a uh, quantity of electricity that is equal to the faraday's sorry that is equal to the coulombs that is equal to the coulombs okay now w is directly proportional to the q so whenever the direct proportionality can convert it into equivalence so w is equal to the the direct proportionality is converted to the equivalent and now we use the sum of the uh, sum of the constant that is nothing but Sorry, electrochemical equivalent, electrochemical equivalent constant, electrochemical equivalent constant. Here, that is equal to simply it is electrochemical equivalent constant. So, simply here it is electrochemical EEC, electrochemical equivalent constant. So, now here W is equal to Z into I, Z into Q. Simply we know that Q is equal to Z into I into T. So I in I in amperes in current, current in amperes, time in seconds, time in seconds. So here it is the Z. So Z is nothing but electrochemical equivalent uh, constant. Okay. So simply it is electrochemical constant. So so now here in case of Z, so now let us observe here it I is the amperes, current in amperes, T is the seconds. Now let us observe. So if if one ampere current, one ampere current passed through the one second passed in one second so one ampere current passed in one second that means uh, w is equal to z into one into one so simply w is equal to z so this is the definition okay so the definition of z is equal to the quantity the amount of substance whether it is liberated or deposited through a uh, passing of one ampere current in one time one second time in one second time that is nothing but z so w is equal to z so that means uh, here the quantity of electricity well 
the quantity of electricity is equal to 1, so W is equal to the Z. W is equal to the Z. So this is the simplest formula regarding to the Faraday's laws. Simplest formula. Now here W is equal to Z into I into T. So here Z is equal to equivalent constant. Z can also be written as like a equivalent weight. Equivalent constant means equivalent weight by so the Faraday of current. The Faraday of current. So we don't know that. Why, why you use the Faraday of current? We don't know that. So let us go through the very basic part of this equation. Very basic part. So that Faraday, simply it is nothing but a charge of one mole of electron. One mole of electron. So we don't know the charge of one mole of electron. We don't know really. We don't know. Okay. So now simply, so charge of an electron. We know that and charge of an electron. So here it is the charge of electron is equal to the one point six zero two into ten to the power minus nineteen coulombs. Okay. So this is the charge of electron, and which are discussed in our atomic structure classes. Okay. Now here charge of electron. Again, we know that one mole of one mole of electrons. Which is equal to the Avogadro number, which is equal to the Avogadro number. We know that Avogadro number 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. 10 to the power 23. So we know that the calculations of so if one mole of electrons which is equal to the 6.0223 into 10 to the power 23 based on the Avogadro number. So if one electron having the second charge, 1.60602 into 10 to the power 3. So then so 6.023, that is one Avogadro number of one Avogadro number of electrons charges how much? So simply, so the now one mole of electron, one mole of electron charge is equal to, uh, so the simple thing is 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 into 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19, the multiplication. So we know that the calculations, if 5, five pence is equal to the 10 rupees, if 5 pence is equal to the 10 rupees, okay, so they are given in the like uh, this formula so then how much of the two pence cost so we don't know so 10 pence by 5 is equal to oh, e, which is equal to the one pen cost into how much pence what we need so that is equal to the like a two 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 is a four rupees okay that is four rupees calculation in similar way so here the number of one uh, so six point zero two three into ten to the power twenty three is a uh, one mole which contains one mole of electrons so now here it is electrons by one mole so six point zero two three into ten to the power twenty three by one into the number of uh, the charge required for our one electron so that is one point six zero two into ten to the power minus nineteen so this is equal to the ten to the power twenty three into minus nineteen that is equal to the ten to the power four so six point zero 023 into 1.602 that is equal to the approximately 9.6 into 48846. So approximately it is equal to that. So somewhat uh, decimal places will use that. So this is equal to the 96486.46 coulombs. 46 coulombs. So now here approximate values uh, which are calculated, which are used in the world, uh, like a competitive calculations, 96,500 coulombs. 96,500 coulombs that is equal to the one Faraday. So one mole of charge of one mole of electron which is equal to the one Faraday. Charge of one mole of electron which is equal to the one Faraday. So now which is also written as equivalent weight by 96,500 coulombs. 96,500 coulombs that is equal to the gel. Okay, so now let us imagine uh, let us imagine ourselves based on these formulas. So if uh, quantity of electricity positive three it is equal to the one, then what will happen? Okay, now let us discuss the basic part. So that is uh, so here metal cation which abstract the n number of electrons, then it forms the metal. That is the simplest representation of the element. It is a reduction reaction. So if one electron gives rise to the one mole of a metal, one mole of metal, 
So one electron will produces the one mole of metal. One mole of so uh, like uh, if it is a sodium, sodium, magnesium, magnesium, aluminium is aluminium. Okay. So then one Faraday of electricity. So ninety six thousand five hundred grams, like a uh, one Faraday of ninety six thousand five hundred coulombs of electricity will give us uh, x amount. That means uh, the mo atomic mass. So simply it is a uh, molecular mass of the substance. Molecular mass of the substance. So then uh, simply z is equal to electrochemical equivalence. So the amount of substance, uh, the amount uh, that is nothing but a molecular weight of the substance by the quantity of electricity passed through it 96500 the quantity of electricity passed through it so if one electron is present then number of electrons that is one electron having the 96500 coulombs charge one electron having the 96500 coulombs charge if n number of electrons are placed then it is n number of electrons are used z is equal to molecular weight by 96500 into n number of electrons so here z is equal to molecular weight by so n number of electrons into faraday so any number of electrons into faraday so we know that the molecular weight by so simply z factor or sometimes they are used in it is an n factor so both are the same so molecular weight by z factor so that is the number of electrons in like a redox reaction is z factor so molecular weight by z factor into faraday so simply it is equal it is equal to the equivalent weight so equivalent weight by yeah, Faraday's equivalent weight by Faraday's. So this is the Z value. So we are used in the our previous equation. So Z is equal to equivalent weight by Faraday. Z is equal to equivalent weight by Faraday. In this method, we will observe the the quantity of amount. So how much quantity of amount is passed? So based on that, so many like a previous year questions are observed. They are might be asked in like a previous year questions based on these formulas okay so now so if quantity of current is equal to the one one coulomb so then w is equal to z into i into t so i into t is equal to q z into q is equal to one so then q is equal to one w is equal to z w is equal to z so l let us examine ourselves so if sodium sodium plus will abstract the one electron then it forms the sodium Okay, so then Z value is equal to the amount of substance. So Z is equal to the amount of substance according to the our formula. So the molecular weight of amount of sodium is 23 by 1 Faraday. By 1 Faraday into how many electrons are transferred? Only one electron. So this is the Z is equal to 23 by 96,500. So here it is the electrochemical equivalent of the sodium method. So let us example. So let us examine. So second example, magnesium will absorb the two electrons. Then it forms the magnesium. So then the formula is equal to Z is equal to the magnesium weight is 24. So one Faraday. So one Faraday into not one Faraday. So Faraday into number of electrons is 22 electrons. So now here the magnesium value is magnesium value is Z factor of magnesium is equal to so 24 by like a 96,500 into 2. So in case of in similarly aluminium plus 3 will gain the 3 electrons then it forms the aluminium. So Z is equal to 27 by 96,500 into 3 fat. So this is the whenever we use the molecular weight uh, then divided by the number of electrons. So in case of equivalent weight. So equivalent weight of aluminium is so molecular weight by its Z factor. So molecular weight of aluminum is 27, the Z factor of aluminum is uh, its valency, that is plus 3, so it is uh, obstructed by the plus 3, then it is uh, divided by the 3, so then here it is uh, 9 times. So 27 by 3, which is equal to the 9 times, Z is equal to 9 by 96,500 coulombs. So these are the calculation of Z values of a various pattern, various of electronic system. So that's why we will use the same same equation over there. Okay. Now, finally, I'll give the some of the equations regarding to the uh, paradigm of first, first law. I think it is clear for that. Okay, guys. Now let us uh, summarize the all the formulas which are used in the like uh, to solving the Faraday first law questions, Faraday first law of type of problems. Okay, so the first fall W is equal to like a uh, W is directly proportional to the Q. W is equal to Z into Q. So W is equal to Z into I into T. So whenever Q is equal to I T, since uh, Q is equal to I into T. Okay, so we know that Z is equal to equivalent weight by like uh, equivalent weight by in Faraday, so that is equal to the one number of Faraday. So or if equivalent weight is equal to molecular weight by n factor or z factor into Faraday.
So Z factor into Faraday. So by substituted these two equations over there, so then W is equal to Z Z value is equal to equivalent weight by Faraday into I into T. Faraday into I into T. Sometimes they are given in the like a equivalent weight of metal. So the better to go with, with the equivalent weight. So if you go through the molecular weight, then you will forget about uh, these uh, Z, Z factor. Then it is you lost your marks. That's why. So the better way to solve the problems of Faraday first law through the, this problem is better. Okay. So now sometimes uh, equivalent weight. Uh, so simply it is equivalent weight into I into T by so Faraday. Faraday. Okay. So now instead of equivalent weight, we use the molecular weight uh, that is uh, required for the Z factor into I into T. So I think in previous video I will discuss the uh, I had discussed about uh, like a Z factor. Okay. So this is the another formula uh, which are used in the our equation. So simply so W is equal to molecular weight into I into T by Z factor into uh, Faraday is equal to ninety six thousand five hundred coulombs. So here also. W is equal to equivalent weight into I into T by 96,500. This is the another form. The both are equal, but one Faraday is equal to 96,500. One Faraday is equal to 96,500. So simply, so if molecular weight, if you if you need our molecular weight calculations, so that means, uh, so if you if need our molecular weight calculations, uh, so let us go through that. So weight by molecular weight. So let us examine. So molecular weight is shifted over the left side. Then we will have the like I into T by Z factor into 96,500 coulombs. So weight by molecular weight, we know that. So the number of moles is equal to weight by molecular weight. So let us substitute there. So number of molecules, number of moles is equal to I into T by Z factor into 96,500. So number of moles is equal to I into T by Z factor into 96,500 coulombs. So that is an N is equal to number of moles I into T by so Z factor into 96,500 coulombs. This is the another important formula which are used in the Faraday first law equation. So in between in, in equation, so number of, number of moles which is inversely proportional to the n factor. Number of moles which is inversely proportional to the n factor. Sometimes there are there might be asked in like uh, the relation between uh, n number of moles and uh, n uh, like a Z factor in our Faraday equation. So that means uh, n cathode by n anode is equal to Z factor of anode by Z factor of cathode. Okay. So with the help of these equations, we can conclude that uh, this is the relation between the like uh, Z factor and uh, n uh, like a number of moles of cathode and the number of moles of anode. So these are the formulas which are used in the our Faraday law of equations. Okay. Now again, they are given in the current. They are given in the like efficiency of current. So we are observed in thermodynamic reactions so current efficiency so that the Carnot cycle efficiency they are given in the like current efficiency current efficiency efficiency so the efficiency is nothing but in eta efficiency measured in in, in represented in eta so the W is equal to Z into I into T into eta by hundred eta by hundred so if if weight is equal to Z into I into T into eta by hundred so we know that here eta is equal to current efficiency. Eta is equal to current efficiency. We have observed these, these type of equations in thermodynamic Carnot cycle heat engine equations. Heat engine equations. So this is the, the another type of a formula which are used in the like uh, Faraday's first law of the equation. Faraday's first law of the equation. We can substitute the Z value with the, these equations. We will get the similar type of equation uh, which is uh, uh, like uh, the more is eta by 100 is more over, over, over than the like a similar similar type of equations. Okay. That's all for this video. I think here it, I'll give the many more number of print of uh, plenty of formulas which are uh, helpful for the solving like IDJE advanced remains and need to need type of problems so which are very helpful questions for the CSR net and uh, gate uh, gate experience okay so in in gate and CSR questions they might be asked in like um, uh, they are given in the these type of uh, information of the question so with the help of these information you can find the like electrochemical and galvanic cells equations the, that's time definitely we need uh, some of the basic requirement of these quantitative analysis of Faraday's uh, Faraday's first law of the electrolysis okay that's all for this video I think it is very helpful for each and every aspirant okay thank you so much for watching